Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 243 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, May the 15th, 2012. It is. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Hillary Rumble. Hey, Hill. Greetings, world. Hey, world. <laughs> nice to see you. It is. And it's good to be here, I tell you. Always I a do, pleasure to have you here. I do declare. I love it. We were just talking. It's funny that she would say that because <laughs> just before the show, we were talking about how much we love it. We do. And you should, too. I'm, we know you do because you watch us weekly and you're in the chat room and you're awesome so thank you for being here with us too hi michael iowa nice to see you <laughs> greetings to all our friends in the chat room we've got tons of groovy people here and maybe it's your first time watching live so if it is give us a shout out and say hey this is my first time we'd love to mention you and give you a special special greeting for tuning in speaking of which i'd love to say hi to chris reich and uh <clears throat> pyrus rock <laughs> little inside joke. Oh. Nice to have you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> greetings, greetings, greetings. So we got a lot coming up on the show today. Excellent. As we often do. I'm going to let you be a host tonight. This is good. I like it. Oh. I'm just sit back. <laughs> well, I just want to get going well, on okay. the news tease so, because... Hey, what's coming up? What's coming up? Because we got lots going on. All right. I'll tell you. Okay. Love to hear. So... Coming up in the newsroom, <laughs> a new retinal implant could help blind patients see without batteries. Hey. New software is designed to disrupt torrent peer-to-peer -peer networks in an effort to stop piracy. Facebook is launching launching its own app store. That's kind of crazy. Hmm. Scott Thompson lied on his resume to become CEO of Yahoo. What? The guy from PayPal? And it got him fired. Oh, my. So we shall see what that means. As well, lastly, video game ratings are being made simpler and stronger, according to the UK government. You can stick around, because these stories are coming up later in the show. Thanks, Al. Exciting news. Hey, I want to give big shouts out to our viewers who are on YouTube. Uh, we don't often enough say hi to True. people like DOSBox Mom, who joins us there on a regular basis. <laughs> hi there. Hey. Um, and, and I gave DOSBox Mom a little bit of a fright this week. And I, <laughs> I thought I'd mention to everybody who watches through YouTube, you're going to start noticing that a lot of odd videos are going to be showing their way <laughs> on the Category 5 channel. And that's because... If you recall, YouTube used to be limited to 10-minute videos. Yes. Then yes. they increased it to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then they said, okay, well, a select few of you are going to be upgraded to an unlimited yeah. amount of time. So we were selected during that phase. Yes. So, yes, <laughs> we started uploading full one-hour episodes of Category 5 Technology TV Crazy. at that point. But we're already, you know, season three mm -hmm. at that point. So now what we're doing, for those of you who are watching through YouTube, is we're going back finally going back it's a long time coming cool. we're going back and we're putting in season one season two season three and this is all part of our venture to launch our brand new website which is coming july 1st mm -hmm. on that website you're going to be able to go back as far as season one back in 2007 mm. i don't know what to think about that <laughs> they're oldies but they're goodies it'll be more like for the nostalgic value nostalgia yes yeah you know how you have that box in the top shelf of the cupboard and it's got really stupid things in it like, <laughs> you know, mummified fish heads, for example. Oh, and, yeah. And, you know, the stuff that you just don't normally keep <laughs> around, but for some reason the, the, this means something to you. And that's what episodes one through 200 are to us <laughs> here. So... So be you know be mindful. Uh, this broadcast, as it is, if you see it, we're on episode number two forty three right now. Mm -hmm. So two forty three, two forty four, two forty five. They're all current episodes. If you see fifteen, mm. not so current. Seemingly archaic. One a week. Do the math. <laughs> it's pretty simple to find out that uh, most of the stuff that we talk about in that episode is no longer available because <laughs> it's obsolete. But we got to get it up there. For, for the you. memories. For the memories. Yeah. 
the jokes, <laughs> the different hairstyles of Robbie, you know, all that kind of stuff. The hairstyles. Like the time that I had the faux hawk <laughs> didn't happen, but now I made you look. Now you'll be, you'll be like, ooh, okay, where is that? Gotta find it. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't give us a real chance to put stuff it, it kind of puts things sequentially. So when mm -hmm. you upload a video, it becomes the new video on your channel. Right. So unfortunately, that means as we're uploading these videos, it's going to be really old episodes that are going to be showing up there. So this also affects our viewers on blip.tv as well. Um, so, But do stay tuned. July 1st is a very exciting day for us as we launch our new website. We're going to be making sense of it because it is going to be indexed, searchable. It's going to be listed and alphabetized and organized. Mm. And you're going to have the ability to reorganize based on, uh, let's say we want to see all the episodes that have Hillary Rumble in them. Oh. Easy breezy. Too kind. Just click on her name <laughs> and boom, you got them all. So it's mm. going to be very, very cool. That is pretty sweet. That's what's going on on YouTube. All right. Also big news, uh, bad news for one, mm. good news for potentially, uh, potential, uh, potentially? <laughs> Why can't I say potentially tonight? <laughs> good news for one, good news for everybody who, uh, who is qualified or was qualified for the Eco mm -hmm. Alkalines giveaway. Unfortunately, we have been unable to contact our winner of a year supply Shucks. of Eco Alkalines batteries. Unfortunately for them. Fortunately for you, we are reopening the contest. We have a year supply of eco alkalines, environmentally friendly, carbon neutral alkaline batteries to give away. We'll send them anywhere in the world. Huh? Anywhere? Wherever you are, all you got to do is get onto cat5.tv slash eco. That's going to take you to their website. Scroll down. You're going to see two things. You're going to see their Facebook page mm -hmm. and you're going to see their Twitter account. Follow them on Twitter like them on Facebook. That's all you have to do. Cat5.tv slash eco. That's going to put your name in the draw. That's going to cast your ballot for the upcoming draw that's going to happen in two weeks time. A year supply of eco alkalines batteries. Wow. Yeah. That's How pretty sweet awesome. it is. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> Wish I could win. Speaking of impressive stuff, tonight we're going to be teaching you how to save a ton of money. Mm. Not by compromising anything at all, just by using technology smartly. Mm. We're going to put 500 to potentially $1,000 in your pocket after this evening's broadcast. So stick around. We're going to be learning all about that. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Now, when you mentioned Eco Alkaline Prize Pack being sent anywhere in the world, yes. it reminded me of the fact Mm. That stuff is being sent to us from all around the world. We get lots of it. Stuff. But, you know, stuff. But what's actually cool <laughs> is the postcards we get. Because they're little snapshots of your town. And we can see your handwriting and see your personal story. And then kind of highlight where you're from, from around the world. So we don't have any new postcards today, I'm afraid. That's what but I look like when I go into the post office. They like, say, oh. why are you crying today? Say, none of my friends sent me a postcard. <laughs> but let's turn that frown upside down. And this is how you do it. Send your postcards addressed to Category 5 Technology TV, P.O. Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario. And, of course, we're in Canada, the best country in the world, L4N7W7. So send us a postcard, and we will highlight your, your little home and native land, on the show. Not that there's anything wrong with where you're from. No. But Canada is the best. I'm biased, I think. We're, I'm biased. I like Canada. <laughs> Canada's pretty groovy. I'd say. <laughs> we do love to receive your postcards, and it's, it's actually a lot of fun because... It is fun. Um, well, for one thing, it starts for, for me when I get to the postal box, and I open it up, and quite often there's a postcard <laughs> in there for me and then I you know I do my shopping and stuff and I go through the checkout and the cashier quite often notices that hey that's a postcard from Afghanistan You're like, Ooh. or Malaysia or wherever <laughs> it may be from and it you know it sparks up conversation we start talking about the show mm -hmm. and how wonderful the viewers of category 5 are how much we appreciate you <laughs> and uh, and I certainly love to receive those I know Hillary does as well oh, I do. So. and we're working on the wall Come Love on. to put your postcard on there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, also uh, check out our mobile website. It's m.cat5.tv. You can scan that code. 
or you can just type it into your mobile device, m.cat5.tv. Sweet. Yeah. So we have to take a real quick break here at Category 5 Technology TV. Don't go anywhere. Again, we're going to be teaching you how to save a ton of money tonight. We've got your viewer questions. You've got viewer questions. Oh, yeah. Then. I always got questions. And we've got the He's wonderful got the Hillary Rumble here. Oh, shucks. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'll see you in the chat room. Category 5 on Freenode, and we'll be right back after this. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com You are watching Category 5 Technology TV, and we are a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. We love getting your questions, folks. Live at Category5.tv is the way to email us. Or you can join us in the chat room tonight, Category 5 on Freenode, or visit our website, Category5.tv. And right there, you'll see a link for the live chat room. If you're watching this after the fact, if you want to join us in the chat room throughout the week, uh, the link disappears from our homepage, but is always available on the Interact menu. Of the website. Easy. We'd love to see you. Yeah, join us. Cool. All right. First question of the evening. Excellent. I love yeah, questions. Me too. This comes to us from Andrew Jameson. Hey, Andrew. Saying, I recently downloaded a set of free templates in an effort to customize them. The template came with a PSD um, mock-up of the images on the site, okay. pre-sliced for the web. I was told in order to change colors and other image edits, I could edit the slices, then export using Photoshop's export to web feature. Hmm. This is fine except for one small issue. I do not own Photoshop and do not plan to spend close to $800 on a copy of it. <laughs> is there a way you can get the GIMP to view the, the pre-sliced portions of the PSD file so then you can edit them? And if so, how would you then export them in a similar fashion to the export export to web feature um, in Photoshop. Hmm. See, so he has attached um, one of his I PSD files. Smooth CSS PSD file. And he hasn't edited anything in it. Okay. So this was straight, um, the file straight as he downloaded it. So this is exactly as it was. Yes. You'll notice that uh, GIMP opens a PSD file just fine. But unfortunately, we lose those slices. And what slices basically are are, are cut lines where it's going to cut the image mm. up into a whole bunch of little images. Unfortunately, the GIMP isn't going to import those from a Photoshop file. Mm. I say unfortunately, but to be honest, slicing in that regard is kind of the old style way of doing things or huh. in, in looking at this template real briefly. I, I'll explain what, what I mean by that, Andrew. Essentially, what I see when I see this image, let's say we have slices, okay? And you can create slices in the GIMP. And I'll show you how to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my cursor down on the uh, ruler up at the top, and I'm going to drag, and I'm going to drop. But what that does is it creates a slice at the top here. And so I end up with all these weird s little slices that can be tabled, which is what this was designed for originally uh, with Photoshop these slices can be tabled to create a nice layout. You can do that with the GIMP as well. You can create them, but it's a little bit, you know, as far as web goes, it's a little bit, can be sloppy because you're, you're working with, a, basically what it does is it takes the rendered image, the, the rasterized image, so all layers combined, and then cuts it up and spews it out. So instead of having a nice clean backup, which I put, divs on top of that are nicely stylized using CSS3 or CSS2, I'm instead ending up with little bits and pieces of all these different things. And instead of using uh, border radius and CSS to make a nice rounded edge on my, uh, on my website mock-up, on my website layout, I'm instead having to use all these little images that give me those rounded corners. So it's kind of an old style way of doing things. That said, it, it can be useful. It's, it is useful 
to know how to use slices. So you see that I did create some slices here by dragging the ruler up at the top and the ruler on the left. You can create those slices. They're always square. It's not like a, you know, it's not like I can cut out a slice like that. It doesn't happen that way. So I've created those slices. I can right click and I can go filters, web, slice. Tell it where you want to save. It's going to create a slice.html, which as I said, is, is going to just be a jumble of table. It's a table. It's, it's going to use uh, HTML tables to lay out and position that stuff. Not to say you can't, with a little know-how, fix that so that it's using mm -hmm. divs, but it's going to spew out a table, and that's the way Photoshop does it as well. So you would choose JPEG, for example, um, ping if you want to have lossless imagery, but in this case, because they're square edges, you could just go with JPEG and use uh, high-quality JPEG. Um, there are no transparencies, right, because it's a slice and there's, nothing, there's no alpha layer. So that's how you would create new ones. Unfortunately, not importable. But what I would do, looking at this image, Andrew, uh, is I would do things a little bit differently. So I would look at this. I'd lose the slices. Let's see if I can just revert. OK, so now let's turn off some of the upper layers, get rid of all this mess of stuff here, and let's look at that background. There it is. So that's the background of my website. You'll notice what I see from this is that it has a gradient that extends down. Okay, so that's 2C4161. And you'll notice as I go up, it's still 2C at the, about the midpoint. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. What I did is I clicked at the very, very bottom, right about here, and then I clicked up around here, and I notice that the colors are exactly the same here. So when I create my image, I can actually crop that a little bit. I'll show you what the GIMP does that's really, really nice. I'm going to control A for select all. I'm going to edit, copy visible, and then I'm going to paste as a new image. Now I've got the background just as an image. It's completely flat. But what I can do is I can right click on that and I can go image, auto crop image. That's going to take it down to this nice little tiny file. I'm going to go file, save as, slap it on my desktop, call this header background dot jpg let's export that save it at 80 percent quality just to compress it down a little bit without losing any quality hit save and now on my desktop i'm going to have this file which is only 12k hmm. it's not a slice it's now an image that i can place as my as my body background position top center and then create and then uh, set the color of the background of your website to the very lowermost color right down there just to a Doppler sample at the very very bottom and then it's going to look like the exact same thing that you you had up there so then going back to the the mock-up the original mock-up there let's see I'm gonna revert again so now we've got this thing in the middle I'm gonna lose the background there we are. So the one thing about this is that all this could be done with CSS without any images, except for these little frilly things here. So all these rounded things, I would suggest that you create a wrapper div with an FFF background, which is white. It's what it looks like you're using there. And use border-radius is the CSS that you want to use to do that. You can do um, box shadow as well if you want to add a little bit of a feathered yeah. edge around the edge. And, and study up on that stuff because then you're not going back to, they'll call it web 1.0, but you know, old school <laughs> using tables to create really terribly laid out, uh, as far as the code goes, as far as the code base goes, terribly laid out websites. It's mm -hmm. really about now, it's, it's about creating sites that, yeah, they look exactly the same. It looks very attractive, but you're able to create it in such a way that it's, it's very lightweight, very fast works on mobile devices and is using new technologies, not tables, but <laughs> divs with, with CSS and CSS3. That's the way I would approach that, Andrew. So hmm. good luck. I hope that that puts you on to uh, some interesting adventures. <laughs> uh, but uh, see, right off the top, I showed you how to do the slices if you really, really want to. Don't recommend it, though. <laughs> I want you to learn the real deal. So right on. Yeah. Oh, he was just saying in the chat room. He's actually in the chat room. OK. Um, hey, Andrew. Initially, oh, a few minutes ago, he said, the slices were used to pull image fragments out so CSS could stretch it. Um, 
There really aren't any though, really. This is not tables either. They use the image slices to pull the small image out to stretch. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. So they have an, a CSS sample, and what they're doing is they're creating a slice, you know, like this kind of idea. And they're saying, okay, well, there's an itty bitty slice in the middle there that's going to give you a little square that you're going to repeat dash x. But again, you're using images. You could use um, CSS gradients to create that. Get on to, uh, let's just jump over to Google, CSS gradient generator. Click on the Colorzilla one there, and that looks pretty similar. The default one, pick one that looks blue, play around with it, sample your colors, right? All I'm doing is picking a CSS gradient. Let's say it's like that that I want to use. Pretty similar to what's at the top. And then just copy the, the code to your clipboard. And you've got something to work with that's CSS. No images, hmm. right? Very, very quick. It's going to cache because it's in your CSS file. Um, so you can put it behind a CDN or something like that, a prox uh, cached proxy, and it's going to be extra, extra fast to serve it cool. up to your, your site visitors. So, but that said, you know, repeat X on an image is sometimes required. With what this template looks like, it's not required. So I would stay away from it myself because I'm all about super zippy <laughs> with my website <laughs> coding. All right. Very cool. Cool. He says that is a cool tool. Thank you very, very much for your question. I hope that, that you know, I, I, I know I'm kind of just throwing some ideas at you. Yeah. But sure. here you go. It's an adventure learning to uh, do web design. Uh, I think that uh, it's important to, to see all the different ways to do it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to take the code that they've given you and, and work with that. Experiment a little bit. Have fun. All right. Thanks again for the question. Thank you. Have another question here coming to us from Ron Smith. Hey, Ron. Hi, Robbie. In the past, I've been able to download your show like the next day by starting the video stream and then saving it. Okay. When I try to get the video file now, I only get a 2.5 megabyte file and not the full video. So I'm assuming something has changed on your new oh. site. What's the best way to get the video <laughs> now with the same quality so I can watch it offline? I see what's happening. He's, you're bringing up the pop-up player and you're trying to save from that. I guess so. What, what may have happened, the behavior that you were experiencing before is just a side effect of HTML5. Hmm. Because a lot of the videos... Uh, depending on what platform you're on, it's going to detect that you're on an HTML5 compatible browser. It's going to load for you the H.264 um, uh, QuickTime file. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> the QuickTime file will load in an HTML5 browser, and then you file save as, and all of a sudden you're saving the QuickTime file. That's not necessarily the case if all of a sudden... Uh, better copy is detected for your system mm -hmm. and it's served up in a different way. Perhaps it uses a, a particular Flash player, for example, which we only lean toward Flash if your browser supports it. So our site detects that okay. it's supported and intelligently chooses the best option for your browser. So, And then you're going to see changes like that happening that you're going to see on the V2 website, the existing website, as we continually build the version 3 website which launches it launches the 1st of July because a lot of the the um, a lot of the programming is shared between the two sites like the player is, right. is obviously shared between the two sites there's no point in hmm. reinventing the wheel <laughs> but we improve it for the new certainly. site certainly okay so to answer your question get over to our website category5.tv or if you're watching this and you just want a, a quick link uh, it's cat5.tv slash cs or no rss <laughs> i'm thinking about andrew jameson's question still css okay rss is for your aggregator um alternatively the way <coughs> pardon me the way you can get there is watch the show and subscriptions and rss feeds okay so on that page no matter how you get there you're going to see an hd feed an sd feed and a portable mp4 feed the top two are h.264 they should, for all time, as far as I can tell at this point, unless some other format comes along five years from now, as was the case with MP4 and then when H.264 took over, uh, these feeds, the top two, should always contain all the most recent and many, if not all, of 
the old episodes as well. Mm. So they're, they're, we're leaning toward those are the feeds that you should be subscribed to. If you're subscribed to a different feed at this point, maybe consider switching just in case. Um, so what you would do if you're using a device with, let's say, a 19-inch or under monitor, use the SD feed. If you're using something with a larger monitor, you'll want to use the HD feed, which is going to give you a 720p file. You can aggregate that yourself if you want. If you have a, an aggregator such as Miro Internet TV, for example, or any podcast aggregator, alternatively, you can just simply click on it, and it's going to bring you to a, a web page version of that, and you'll see that each one, each episode up until last week's episode is there. And the play now button is indeed a link to, if you can see at the very bottom of my screen, the M4V file. So I can right click and go save link as, and now I've got the MP M4V file coming over. Okay. Be mindful, of course, that the HD feed is going to be quite a bit larger as far as the download goes uh, than the SD feed. SD being standard definition, HD being high definition. So give that a go. You don't need to have an aggregator to get it. I suggest using an aggregator just because then it's already downloaded by the time you want to watch it. Um, but if you want to do it manually, <laughs> pardon me, our servers are extra fast. You should be able to download it in only a couple minutes as well. Cool. Bitsprocket says plus one for Miro. <laughs> yeah. Miro, dot, uh, Miro Internet TV. It's a fantastic application mm -hmm. at getmiro.com. And uh, I definitely um, support it and, and recommend it. It gives you not just Category 5, but tons of other television shows as well that mm -hmm. are available for you online. So, very cool. cool. Yeah. Speaking of cool, I have an email that's not a question. All right. A non-question email. Always fun, too. <laughs> okay. Jot sent us this email regarding his <laughs> common dung collection as featured in the video Common game. Common dung collection. <laughs> In the video game Entropia Universe. Like this is a collection that he keeps in his well, in my collection. He sends me this <laughs> what you, lengthy what email yeah. saying that he has stuff grouped with um, fruits, papillon, bombardo, carut, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just a really lengthy email, so I'm trying to summarize because it's super fun and there's lots of fun stuff in here. Anyways, one thing he says that people complain to him um, saying um, that they can't be his friend in a trophy <laughs> universe. And it's oh. surprising to him because he's happy to be friends with them. Uh -huh. um, Maybe he sent a program us, bug. I don't know. A bunch of photos as well. Some okay. snapshots. I'm going to try to bring these up, John. Sure. So one photo shows that if you right click, you can select system and then select the player register and search for Jot, but nothing shows up. Oh, okay. So if nothing shows up, then you can't be friends. Makes I sense. See. I understand. Okay, so he's saying that in the game, people are having trouble befriending him in the game. I thought he meant because of his dung collection. That makes no. sense, too. It's not. It's like a No, that's a why they thing. wouldn't want to be friends. <laughs> it's just all very confusing. <laughs> it's just so confusing. Yes. So, Let's see, is it anyways, this is the oh, first is that? picture. Okay, okay, so this is his dung, dung collection. On Planet Calypso. Okay. That's the collection. Magnificent shot. You should Just be very proud. Groovy. So he sent us another <laughs> photo here. Okay. Um, if you try to search to be Jot's friend, don't search for Jot. Search right. for Joshua Jot or so search don't for do that. Avarius. S search instead for Avarius. So now you know, anyone who is wondering. Okay. Um, what else? So if you, you search us? for Joshua Jot, there he is. This is on Planet Calypso. You can download the free game at cat5.tv slash calypso. You can. And friend Jot now. Now you know how. Now you know how. Yeah. Um, what else does he say here? One good thing, though, is if you search in the mentor register under the system menu, then searching Jot, you'd find Jot. So, anyways, he's saying just if you're looking for him, you couldn't find him, search for Joshua Jot. He also <laughs> sent us this other photo, which is pretty amazing. Isn't that cool? He is... Just check this out, people. He is playing the game. He's in-game. And the in -game. game is watching Category 5. He's got a TV in Entropia Universe, Planet Calypso, and is watching Category 5 TV. That is cool. That I is, didn't know you could do that. That is so... It's like... 
Yeah, that's just mind blowing. It's like watching the computer in the computer. In it's the a computer. little weird. It's like paradoxical. Yeah, it's kind of hurting like, my head a little. Oh. Yeah. But I love the screen grab. That's, <laughs> I think that's pretty really cool. awesome. I love that uh, everything is, is so neatly decorated for Christmas, too. And I love that Robbie's giving Eric the stink eye a little bit. Like, oh. <laughs> I just happen to be it's like, in the photo. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> so thank you for that hilarious email full of fun and just hilarity. That Thanks, was Jot. really humorous. I've actually uh, run around in Planet Calypso a couple times with Jot. He's saved me from really? monsters and things in the past. Thank goodness, yeah. Jot, or else Thanks, who knows man. what would have happened. It can be a lot of fun. Uh, the That's exploration cool. nature of, of the game. Huge, vast landscapes and amazing apartments. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so fascinating to me. What, what possessed you to get a TV in your virtual apartment? <laughs> so that you can watch a show that you can watch without the virtual apartment. Hmm. Curious. Interesting. How neat. Thanks for sending that in, John. Yes, thank you Cheers. very much. That was fun. <laughs> well, I'd say it's just about time for the news. Mm-hmm. It is. Dun, da, da, da. Here are the top stories from Category 5 TV Newsroom. A retinal implant, or bionic eye, which is powered by light, has been invented by scientists at Stanford University in California. Implants currently used in patients need to be operated or powered by a battery. The new device, however, described in the Journal of Nature Photonics, uses a special pair of glasses to beam near-infrared light into the eye. Whoa. Could these, by any chance, look anything like a visor? (laughs) That would be cool. (laughs) That'd be something else, let me tell you. Pressing onward. This powers the implant and sends the information which could help a patient to see. Retinal implants stimulate the nerves in the back of the eye, which has helped some patients to see better. Early results of the trial in the UK show that two men have gone from being totally blind to being able to perceive light and even some shapes. That's so cool. Really cool. It's a step. I mean, okay, so some shapes, and you think, oh, well, blah, blah, blah. that's amazing. <laughs> that's huge. Like, people who are blind. Huge. Seeing something. It may not be what I see, but something. Something that they never Incredible. would have conceptualized before. Yeah. Fascinating. Additionally, this is fascinating. A Russian company has developed software, it says, can disrupt and prevent people from downloading pirated content. Pirate Pay has been backed by Microsoft and has so far worked with Walt Disney Studios and Sony Pictures to stop thousands of downloads. The tool poses a real, or sorry, the tool poses as real bit torrent users and then confuses them, the peer-to-peer networks, hmm. causing disconnections then. I can understand how that, that makes sense, but what about legitimate torrent servers? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I download my Ubuntu desktop operating system through a torrent mm-hmm. so how is that it would it, confuse it does it only i don't know do they only pick out like the ones that are known to be distributing illegal material perhaps but then what about people who distribute legitimate material on those networks that also distribute illegal material because they're peer-to-peer yeah it's the peers that are doing it it's the peers we oh, should investigate dear. this further we should report back let us know <laughs> Facebook has launched its own app store to promote mobile programs that operate using the social network. The company said the app center will become the new central place to find great apps like Draw Something and other titles. Developers will have the ability to charge a fee for apps sold in the store in the near future, Facebook said. The announcement came as uh, Facebook admitted growth in the mobile use could hurt future advertising revenue. The App Center is expected to be rolled out globally in the coming week, said Facebook's Aaron Brady in a post on the network's developer blog. Only apps which make use of Facebook's login system connect um, are eligible to be included in the store. In January, Yahoo named Scott Thompson, the president of PayPal, as its new head. But investment firm Third Point discovered that Mr. Thompson did not hold a degree in computer science as he had claimed. Thompson apologized to staff in a memo on Monday, but made no mention of why his biography had listed the degree he had not received. Mm. Yahoo has acknowledged the inadvertent error and has said it will conduct a review and then... Oh, it said it will conduct a review and then uh, fired him as CEO on Sunday. 
Ross Levinshin, a 48-year-old executive who oversees Yahoo's media and advertising services, is taking over as the interim CEO. Don't lie on your resume, people. Don't lie. Just be true to yourself. It's important. Because they could have searched it on Yahoo and then found out it was false. Nobody searches on Yahoo. But he worked at Yahoo, so they should Oh, maybe have. he searched it. Do you think he was using Google? They... Oh, that's just another issue. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. This poor guy. All right. The system by which video games are rated in the UK is to be made simpler and stronger, the government has said. Games will now be rated by the Video Standards Council in line with Europe-wide guidelines. Previously, additional ratings were decided upon by the British Board of Film Classification. The new system means for the first time that anybody selling a 12-rated game to a child under that age could face jail time but does not apply to games that are bought online. You can get these full stories at our website at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash, who's awesome, as well as we have contributions from our stellar community viewers. If you, that means you, have a news story you think is worthy of honor or mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hillary Rumble. No problem. <laughs> Tonight's show is brought to you in part by GardengateFarms.com. For certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice, visit their website, GardengateFarms.com. Also, the clean power here at Category 5 TV is brought to you by Cordery Electric Contracting, Inc. You find them online, CorderyElectric.com, and uh, they are the official electrical company of Category 5 Technology TV. Were you ever here when we had the power issues? couple times a couple like, times it was flicky, scary flicky stuff lights or things cutting things out exploding and yeah never again thanks never. to quarter electric <laughs> they're great awesome. man they are fantastic and they'll come right to you uh, if you're within about 100 kilometers of uh, of barry and even beyond uh if you want to contact them quarterelectric.com sweet yeah what have you been up to oh you know keeping it real doing my thing always <laughs> when is Hillary Rumble not keeping it real? Doing her thing. <laughs> cool beans. <laughs> cool beans. Cool beans. Yeah. No, I'm good. I just, you know. Big yeah. day's coming up. It's coming. Yeah. Getting all the preparations. P.S. I'm getting married. If you're just watching, you're like, what is she talking about? Wedding prep is well underway. Things are coming along and yeah, it's going good. Excellent. It's hard to plan a, a wedding, though, because you want to have this most amazing thing, but you want to not spend a buttload of money. I'm all about saving money. So, yeah, it's crazy. I think you're creative, though. I think you can do it. I hope you so. You come up with amazing things, <laughs> like ho hosting a party where everyone dresses in 1970s outfits from thrift shops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. While roller skating. While roller skating. Not roller blading. Skating. skating. Different. They have four wheels, two on each side. They're like a skateboard that goes on your feet. True. So it's pretty rad. Interesting stuff. Well, I know that you want to save money. I do. With the marriage <laughs> coming up, I mean, you're going to start looking at, okay, you're going to be what, getting a house or an mm -hmm, apartment yeah. at least and, and getting all these new expenses. Yay. Yeah, it's wonderful. That uh, <laughs> we've never had to think about before. <laughs> I leapt into that 10 years ago. And, you know, little things like I've, I've got my phone bill here, mm -hmm. for example. And, and this is just last month's phone bill. $54.92. $54.92 out of my pocket mm. just to have phone service. That's without any calls. That's just for just the, service the service itself. Period. We pay separately for our long distance. We've got this guy. Oh. That was another twelve dollars and forty eight cents. Hmm. So if we do the math, twelve I've got my little <laughs> iPhone esque calculator. I was looking at that, I'm like, twelve forty eight. It's my calculator. <laughs> That's fun. Old school style. I like it. Twelve forty eight plus fifty four ninety two. That's a typical month. Mm-hmm. So I paid $67.40 last month, just for a couple of phone calls. I mean, that's the length of our long distance bill. That's crazy. Okay, times that by 12. So for a year, what are we looking at? $808.80. Ew. That's just So let's just say 800 bucks is what I am paying regularly. Wow. That's a typical month. Wow. 
a, a pretty basic month. I mean, it's, it's sometimes more than that. Sometimes I see a $25 long distance bill. I've had it. <laughs> I'm done with this. Okay. I'm All throwing right. away 800 bucks. That's the way that we got to look at it. Yeah. So. Get rid of that. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And along comes Magic Jack. Hmm, tell me more. Check out cap5.tv slash Magic Jack. Jot that down. I want you to take a look. I saw this on the TV. Mm-hmm. And... We're intrigued. I'm of course. <laughs> intrigued, but extremely skeptical, <laughs> right? Like, is this thing for real? So tonight, I am not going to give you a product review so much as we're going to do some myth busting, myth busting tonight. Sweet. Find out, is this thing legit, right? Is this for real? So I got one of these from cat5.tv slash Magic Jack. This is the new Magic Jack Plus. One of the things that was very cool about this one, it doesn't need a computer. So if you were like, oh, Magic Jack, that means I have to have my computer on all the time. It's going to be plugged into the USB. Yeah. Now this, this comes with all the stuff so that you can just plug it into the wall. Oh, that's Plug cool. it into your, your networking and you're done, good to go. But how good is it? Still skeptical? Yeah. Have you seen the commercials? I have, and I too wondered because I thought that was really interesting. And They make a couple of claims. First of all, dirt cheap, like 30 bucks a year what? for your phone service. I don't believe it. Thirty bucks a year. Holy! I was paying eight. I'm paying eight hundred. Okay, so thirty bucks. We'll just round it up. It's twenty nine ninety five, divided by twelve. Simple math: two dollars and fifty cents a month. Fair reason. Hence the skepticism. You're like, yeah. How can Can't that work. be? Can't work. They also make a claim that uh, basically a, a child, a baby, could install it. <laughs> so I set out, you know, in our myth busting style. To find out oh, if a baby could, could do this. And from what I can tell, he hasn't even noticed it. Oh, there. Oh, look at a magic jack. <laughs> it's... Maybe the hardest part is getting it out of the package. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to give my baby boy a pair of scissors. Sorry, magic jack. <laughs> not going to happen. So a baby cannot <laughs> install the magic jack. But mm. maybe I can. Think I can do it in under six minutes? Wonder if you could handle it. Think I could? Probably. They make it look so dead <laughs> simple. Like, oh, you just got to plug it in and it's done. The one thing that's a little disappointing about the Magic Jack Plus, I'll say as a Linux user, is you have to have Windows or Mac to set it up. The initial setup. Oh, okay. Not to use it. Just, okay. So you might have to take it to a family member's house or a friend's house. If you're a, a diehard Linux user like me mm-hmm. who doesn't have a Windows computer handy. <laughs> plug it into the Windows computer, set it up. Hmm. But because it doesn't require a computer to run, you can run it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what platform you're on. Hmm. It's just that initial setup. Okay. So I happen to have a Windows laptop, which Hillary uses yes. uh, here at the show. Mm-hmm. And so I actually set out to do it. So let's do the unboxing for one thing, because <laughs> you know how much I love crazy unboxings. <laughs> Look at all the wires. There's the Magic Jack Plus, which does not require a computer. It comes with an Ethernet cable, a USB extender, a AC adapter, so that you can plug it into the wall. Here, I'm going to just plug it right into your laptop there, Hillary, and we're going to see what happens. Mm. Straight in. And lo and behold, what do you want to do? Let's start Magic Jack. Let's see how easy this really is. Okay, downloading a firmware update, which is cool. Love that the first thing it does is make sure that it's up to date. Oh, upgrades itself. I haven't had to really push anything at this point. So that's kind of good, user-friendly. Okay, so it started up this computer console on my Windows 7 system. And so I can use this to dial immediately, or I can just, let's click and make it into a real phone line. Let's click to register, and we'll get a phone number so that we can actually call out on a regular phone or have people call in. This question is just, where did you buy it? Did you get it off the website? Did you call an 800 number? Or in our case, a retail store or a gift? I think it's just a survey question. I don't think it really matters. But So we're going to create our account, real basic setup here. Enter my name, my personal email address, because I'm going to try this on our home phone line. 
Now we're going to enter our info. It needs to know where we are for 911 service. So if you, uh, if you want to be able to have 911 service, obviously, you need to put in an address. So I'm going to choose Canada. I'm going to enter my street address. And then go next. So far, so good. Let's give it a name, home phone. This is pretty easy so far. Mm -hmm. Terms of service, which I've read previously. I'd encourage you to glance over that. It's important stuff. Now, we can go with a vanity number up at the top here, which basically means I can type in Robbie and get a phone number that is actually, it's got my name in it. So I can tell my <laughs> friends, hey, call... 1-800... Yeah, uh, Robbie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I can reserve my number if I want to do it that way. It's going to be a U.S. number. Or I don't want a Canadian or vanity number. I'm going to go with a U.S. number. This way it's basically no extra charge because uh, a vanity number or Canadian number is going gonna, is gonna to cost me a little bit. If you don't want a phone number at all, you can just use your Magic Jack to call other Magic Jack call, uh, users, which is cool if you have a family member that has one. But in my case, I want to use a Canadian number. Notice that you can also, um, in some cases, you can convert your Magic Jack into your existing phone number, transfer from your existing phone company. In my case, I couldn't, so I'm going to create a new one in Ontario, 705 area code. I'm going to choose a Barry phone, you know, three digit, first three digits of the number. There we go. So I'm creating a brand new number right here in Barrie. Easy enough. Reserve my number. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's asking me for my address again in the drop down. Uh, it has my address, so I'll select that. And it's pre populated all the fields for me. And it's asking me for a credit card number. Reason for this is that I've agreed now I want a Canadian number, so I am going to pay what? $10. Okay, so these are some ads. Do you want to go with five years of platinum service for only 100 bucks? You might want to do that if you want to. That's cheap. Gives you all this stuff. Do you want an extra magic jack? Do you want long distance uh, overseas? Do you want a lifetime warranty for free? That I will take. You can turn it off at any time. And of course, I can subscribe to any of those previous promotions at any time too. There's my bill. $10.48. Whoa. Is that going to cover me for the month that's going to cover me for the year whoa that's my full year service with my new magic jack now it sent me an email so i'm just going to enter the code i got the code uh, via email so you need to use a legitimate email address of course activate my magic jack enter a password so that i can log in to voicemail and the web interface do settings on my uh, on my phone line. And then do you want to use this on a computer or do you want to use it standalone? I'm going to click the green button, which is going to let me use this as its own phone line. Simply unplug it from the computer now. And here's where things get exciting. I'm going to plug that Ethernet cable directly into my router. Then get your Magic Jack Plus. And all we need to do is just plug the Ethernet cable, the other end of the Ethernet cable, into the uh, internet port on that device. It's so simple, like you can't go wrong here. There's the USB extender just to make it so that the power is a little bit more flexible, so I'm not sticking this thing out, uh, you know, three inches from the wall kind of thing. I'm going to plug mine into a UPS so that if the power goes out, my phone still works. So in this case, I'm using an extension cord just so for the sake of the demonstration. You'll see that it's powered up. And in fact, it's already getting um, indicators on the Ethernet port as well, just to show that there's some form of activity there. Next and final step is simply to plug in your phone. And this is a wireless phone that I'm plugging in. And you'll see, now what I'm going to do is turn on the phone and see what happens. This okay. is the moment of truth, because dun, 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 dun. really, it's like, <laughs> I'm still skeptical at this point. I've set it up. It's easy breezy. Hey. I've got a dial tone. That's, that's promising. Is anybody in the United States want to receive a call from Category 5 right now? Private message me your phone number if you're in Canada or the U.S. Yeah. Because with my Magic Jack now, I can call anywhere, oh. apparently, in Canada or the U.S. Sweet. And it costs me nothing. 
Private message me your phone number if you're in Canada or U.S. Quick, do it, do it. It does overseas calling as well, but you do have to get a data plan or a, a long distance plan for that. And uh, in that wow. case, it, it's still very, well, very cheap. It'd probably be, yeah, significantly cheaper than, yeah, other means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Private message me your phone number, please. If you're in Canada or the U.S., do get it. near a phone. Private message me your phone number. I want to give this thing a try. Now, it would be risky for me to do so because we're broadcasting live at the same time using our internet pipe. That's something that's important to understand, too. Thank you, Chris Reich. Um, is that it uses your internet connection. So it's a whole different kind of thing because you're now reliant on your internet instead of your phone line. Yeah, which makes me nervous because where I live, my internet works 60% of the time, 40% of the time. If okay. it's windy or there's leaves on the trees or if it's snowing oh, or raining. Oh, it's that bad? Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Okay, well, he here's something about the magic jack. Okay, that's a problem because you, you need to have a working home phone. <laughs> and if your internet is unreliable, then I'm sorry. Yeah. It does have to be a good, solid, high-speed backbone. For sure. I mean, uh, but we're just on cable internet here. And so far, I've got a dial tone. Yeah, we're gonna I mean, that see. sounds promising. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Let's say you're a traveler. Mm -hmm. I've got my home phone now on my magic jack with a cordless phone or whatever. It plugs into the regular phone jack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, now, I can unplug that from... It's an internet device, right? So right. I can unplug it from the internet. I can fly overseas. Hmm. I can plug it in to an internet at the hotel hmm. or at mom and dad's or wherever I am over in Europe, and it rings my home phone number. I can call yeah. people in Barrie locally, and Whoa. they can call me locally. Interesting. If you're a traveler, if you're on business, See, it's, the cool. un it's unbelievable as far as what that can do. Okay, let's give this a go. Let's Notice one of the things I'm not going to do is I'm not going to dial the number one. I'm going to dial first the area code, okay? I no longer have to dial one. There's no such thing as long distance. Gotcha. That right? makes sense. Okay. Hmm. Let's give this a go. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm going to put it on speaker. Make sure you turn down your speakers, okay? Chris, this is you. Chris Reich. I'm getting your voicemail, dude. Hey, Chris. Hey, buddy. We're live on the air. This is Robbie. <laughs> and Hillary. Hello. Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying the show. This is on my Magic Jack. So, how does it sound? Maybe you can let the chat room know, okay? Awesome. Let's see who else has given us their number here. Oh. Okay. Another one. This is it just... sounded pretty clear there. Yeah. Not too bad. I'm getting excited. This is... My skepticism is... Okay. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So this is going to Iowa. Oh. Hi, is this Michael? Yeah. Hi, Michael. This is Robbie Ferguson calling from Category 5 Technology TV. Hey, Robbie. How's it going? Excellent. <laughs> How about you? All right. It sounded good over with the phone. Yeah, you know, I'm getting kind of excited about this. This is kind of cool. I've had one for a while, and it works good. You've been using it? Are you on a Magic Jack right now? Uh, no, this is my home line. Oh, okay. So I'm calling your home line, huh. a landline. I'm calling through the internet right now. Cool. I'm actually uploading, like, we're streaming the show live right now, too. So... so I'm watching you. Beg your pardon? And I'm watching you right now. And there we are. He's he says watching, he's watching us right now. And we're talking. Yeah. It's all happening right now. I'm d doing my best with speakerphone here. For me. Yeah, she's right here. Hi. All right, nice talking to you, Michael. I'm going to I'm going to make a couple more calls here. Thanks, man. All right, thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was pretty cool. It worked. Uh, a Jameson saying in the chat room, "You can now do category 5 wake-up calls." There Hello. you go. Hey, Robbie here. <laughs> I'm going to have to wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> I'm going to have to wake up at 1. Oh, boy. People are from all over the world here. This is incredible. It's pretty neat. It's pretty rad. Hello? Michael. How hey. are How are you, sir? All right. Where are you watching from? Fort Myers. Fort Myers. Nice to have you uh, watching the show. Thanks, buddy. This is great. How, does, how do things sound to you? Good. There you Sweet. have it, folks. Hey, it's by the way, your your phone kept on dialing while mine phone, my phone rang, so it must be a, <laughs> a li little bit of a delay from w if you're watching the feed at the same time, for sure. Michael, thank you very, very much for helping us test this. This is exceptional. 
Cheers. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, bye bye. All right. We've yeah. got time for one more. Arizona. Cool. Interesting. This is so exciting. Now here, this is Bitsprocket who's mentioning that uh, we're actually calling into an asterisk box, and they're using Google oh, Voice cool. on that. Hi, Bitsprocket. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Roddy? I'm excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping us test this. How do things sound on your end? Oh, it sounds fantastic, and you're quite, quite a, a long way away, so it sounds really great. We sure are. Hey, have you ever heard of the Magic Jack? Yeah, actually, I used one for a, a couple of years, although it wasn't the standalone version. It was a okay. prior model. So this being the new Magic Jack Plus, of course, I'm doing this <laughs> just plugged into power and Ethernet and my cordless yeah. phone. It sounds pretty great. Yep. Yeah, it sounds really good. I was skeptical up until now, my friend. I, th I think oh, this thing actually works. No more. It sounds really great. I, I, like I said, I used mine for a couple of years via my computer, and, and I loved it. So I think you've, got, hmm. you've made a good purchase. Cheers. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching. Hey, we'll see you. Cheers. Yep, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cool. Wow. All right. $2.50 a month. Seems very reasonable to me. Including long distance. <laughs> I just called all over the great old American United <laughs> States and one in Canada and fantastic. That's pretty cool. I, I like that. I don't think I have a right to be skeptical anymore. Seems to But work. I think I what happens with a product like this is it's so new and so fandangled and so mm -hmm. unbelievably out there as far as how good it is yeah. for what it costs that you figure it can't possibly work. And plus, they do a lot of really, how do you say, like slap chop kind of advertising. You know, like classy there's a commercials. Really classy commercials where it's like, you know, yeah, it isn't, you know, it's, it's really <laughs> over the top a little bit as far as the, the commercials go. But here you've seen it, you know, for hey, real. Hey, it's here at real. Category 5. I'm pretty excited about that. That's the Magic Jack Plus. You can find out more, you can order one. No obligations. You're going to try it for 30 days. There's your ad. <laughs> Cat5.tv slash Magic Jack. The cost, if you decide to keep it. Now, you've got to pay up front, but they'll, pay, they'll give you your money back if you decide, no, it's not working for me. So try it if your internet isn't necessarily yeah, all that reliable. Right. Give it a try first. You're going to pay $69.95 for the Magic Jack Plus. doesn't require a computer. They still have the one that requires a computer, I would say. You know, now, just go with this one. Yeah, makes more sense. Your first year of long of all your services calling, uh, it's got voicemail, it's got call waiting, call ID, all that. It's included in the sixty nine ninety five. Wow. Your your whole year service. That's what I'm paying in one month. Yeah. Okay. Wow. After the first year, it's twenty nine ninety five per year. And like I say, if you want to get a Canadian phone number or um, one of those fancy Robbie numbers, <laughs> then you're going to pay like ten bucks or something like that, That's twenty bucks. Funny. So yeah. That is. How do you cool. like that? So this could be a good option if you get if, yeah. if you move into Barrie or something and mm -hmm. get a, a fairly reliable internet connection there you go more i'm thinking Take i it like you that you yeah, yeah and then be able to bring it like that's really cool hmm. thank you I so like much it. cat 5tv slash magic jack to check that out thanks everybody i really appreciate your participation tonight and uh very cool that I could try it live on the air. Yeah, that was cool. And risky at the same time. I mean, I've Very done that before risky. and it's failed. <laughs> not not the Magic Jack, but other products that we've tried tried on the air. You've had a few as well. <laughs> and it's always a risk. And that's why I do it. Because I want you to know for real. Like, we're not here promoting a we're product not selling just for the sake. Things. Yeah, we're not. I don't want to sell you something that doesn't work. No. There you have it. It works. We did it. It looks it great. Legit. Legit. Too legit. I'm going to use it here. At the studio, I got a vanity number. You did? 2545 Cat5 TV. 2545 Cat5 TV. Ring me up. Give Next us a call ring. Any time. Leave me a voicemail on my Magic Jack. It rings on my home phone in the studio. It rings on my iPod Touch wherever I am, as long as I've got Wi Fi oh, okay. internet. We're going to be looking at that on a future show. Cool stuff. Yeah. Then so I went, I opted with. The vanity number. That is pretty cool. I thought that cool. was pretty cool. I, I would probably do want to be like 1 800 Hillary <laughs> or whatever. I don't know that you get It's not the 1 800 thing. But you know but what I mean. Yeah, you'll get it. It would just something catchy. You'll end up like me with a phone number that has your name in it, but you have to call Texas. Because <laughs> <laughs> 2545 Cat 5 TV is in Texas. But we love it because we have so many wonderful viewers in Texas who can now call us locally. Oh, 
Oh, I get it. Can I just mention one last thing while we've got 20 seconds left? That just reminded me that if you buy one of these and somebody else buys one, let's say somebody over in the UK buys one, mm-hmm. then I can call them for free. Oh. Because they're, even though they're in the UK, it's a magic jack. Magic jack to magic free. jack. So Very if you cool. have family over in Australia and you're here in Canada, send them one. Yeah. You get 10 bucks off your second one. So Sweet. And then it's free calling for you and your it's family. It's a good investment. Yeah. Cool. Really good. I'm very impressed. That's my spiel. <laughs> Cat5.tv slash Magic Jack. And, of course, our website is Category5.tv. Hillary, fantastic having you here. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. I loved being here. Yeah. Learned a lot. Cheers. Have a great week, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us in the chat room. We'd love to receive your viewer testimonials this week. Uh, all you have to do is go to Category5.tv, click on Interact, and Viewer Testimonials. Love to receive them. Bye, everyone. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.